and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa, and today's recipe is a, such a good one because this is one of my most favorite things to make and eat. I absolutely love it and it's perfect for Easter time. So I'm going to be showing you how I make my ricotta crostata, which basically tastes like a cannoli pie. It is so good and it's perfect for Easter time because I'm also going to be putting some little decorative mini eggs on top. It's going to look so cute but more importantly it will taste delicious and it is not difficult at all everything is pretty easy so I show you how I make my beautiful tart crust and I show you how I make that delicious ricotta filling that I also put mascarpone in it is so good so guys without further ado let's get started and let's make this pie perfect for Easter time Okay guys, so the first step is to make this crust because the pie crust needs to rest in the fridge for about an hour or two, so I like to do this first and you can even do this overnight. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be adding my dry ingredients first and giving this a quick pulse. So first, two cups of flour right to the food processor. Next, one cup of icing sugar or powdered sugar right to the food processor with that flour. Next, half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to be putting the lid on and pulsing this just to make the dry ingredients come together really quickly before we add the butter. Next, I have one cup of cold butter. I just took this out of the fridge. I cubed this up into rough little pieces, but it's okay because they're going into the food processor. If you were to do this by hand, it would actually be a good idea to grate in the butter. It just makes it easier. But basically, one cup of cold unsalted butter right into the food processor. So now lid back on and we're just going to pulse this until the butter sort of resembles like a sandy texture in this flour mixture. Okay, so now that we have the butter in there, let's work on our egg mixture. I have two eggs, so two whole eggs, and to that I'm just going to be adding one teaspoon of vanilla extract, just right to those eggs. And I'm also going to be grating the zest of one lemon. It is always a good idea to use an organic lemon when you're getting the zest. That way you know that it doesn't have any chemicals on it. This is of course optional as is the vanilla extract, but I really like the flavor and aromas that the vanilla and lemon give to this pie crust. It is so delicious. Okay, so I have the two eggs, the one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and the zest from one organic lemon, and we're adding that to this mixture. So we're just going to give this a quick pulse to have everything come together. It should sort of glob together and resemble dough by the end of this. So as you can see, the dough has finally come together. That took a super, super quick in this food processor. Like I said, you can do it by hand, but if you have one of these food processors, you might as well use it whenever you can. Now I'm just taking this dough out and placing this onto this plastic wrap. This is a nice and sticky dough, but it's going to be firming up in the fridge. This needs about one to two hours in the fridge, or you can of course make this overnight the night before and just assemble your tart the next day. I like to flatten it out a little bit and then cover it with this plastic wrap. So here is my disc of dough. It looks really good, ready for the fridge. This is going in for about an hour or two. In the meantime, we can work on that filling. Okay, so now is a great time to make the filling. That way this can go in the fridge with the pie crust as well. And when you're ready to bake, everything is ready. So first things first, this is basically a ricotta filling. I also do add a little bit of mascarpone. So what you need is 600 grams of ricotta and you need 250 grams of mascarpone. If you buy the mascarpone containers, it's usually 500 grams. So just half of that and you have 250 grams. So let's add this ricotta to this food processor with the paddle attachment. 600 grams and this mascarpone 250 grams and let's just give this a whip to incorporate the cheeses together and soften the two cheeses have whipped up it took about 20 seconds I would say now we are ready for the eggs I have three eggs in here and I'm going to try to add them one at a time to the cheese mixture so add one egg give it a whip and then keep adding until your eggs are done so the eggs are combined, let's scrape down the edges and then we are ready to add the sugar and extract. Okay, so I like to add about a cup and a half to two cups of icing sugar, so right into the mixture. And then to the sugar, we are going to be adding some vanilla extract and as well some rum. You can substitute this all for vanilla extract, all for rum extract, all for rum, your favorite liqueur. It's just a taste thing. So I like to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract right into the mixture. 
and then one teaspoon of rum as well. So let's whip up this powdered sugar and extracts until they are nice and combined and then we are ready for the final stage, our chocolate. I am using some semi-sweetened chocolate that I chopped up. I have three ounces or half a cup of chocolate right here. I just finally chopped this up. I actually like to chop this by hand, but if you prefer, you can use chocolate chips by all means. I just find that I like when there's those little tiny granules of the chocolate and some bigger chunks. I think it looks really pretty. So we're adding this to that cheese mixture and then we're just gonna give it a final whip to incorporate. Okay, so this is done. I'm just going to transfer this over to a clean bowl that will actually fit in my fridge because this one is way too big. Okay guys, that was so easy to do and we have our delicious filling. You could have even done this by hand. It was so simple, but I love to use tools when I can. <laughs> so I'm just covering this with plastic wrap and this is going to go into the fridge for as long as the pie crust is basically in the fridge until I need this. You could even have done this overnight as well. That's why this is such a super simple pie recipe because everything can be made ahead of time and then baked off the day of. So let's pop this in the fridge and I will see you guys when the pie crust is ready. my pie pan here ready to go now this is sort of a tart pan I would say the bottom pops out so I don't have to really worry about buttering or flouring this it's going to come off quite easily I really recommend those kind of tart pans it makes it so much easier to bake and then eat after so let's get this dough onto this floured surface we're going to be putting a little bit more flour on top as well and then we are just going to roll this out. We need enough for the pie crust at the bottom and a little bit more for some strips on top as well. So as I'm rolling this out, I just preheated my oven to 350 degrees. So if you hear a little bit of background noise, that's what's going on there. Okay, so don't worry if your dough breaks apart a little bit, it's quite easy to just stick together and place in the pan. Now I'm going to attempt to grab all this dough and then throw it on top of the pie pan right here. So I definitely have more than enough to cover this. Make sure that it coats the sides as well, all of this dough. And then the extra dough, once we cut it off, we're going to be rolling it again and making the little pie strips for the top. So I would say this is like a quarter of an inch thick in terms of how thin I rolled the dough to be. Okay, so once we are happy with this, what we are going to be doing is just pinching the dough off the sides. So sort of pressing it onto the side and pinching it and the dough will just come right off. We are just going to score the pie crust. We are not pre-baking this by any means, so it's actually quite a non-fussy pie dough here. Now with the scraps, I'm just going to take them, set this pie aside for now, and I'm just going to re-roll this out again. This dough is nice and soft and quite easy to work with, so. It's not those kind of doughs that when you re-roll them, they're difficult. <laughs> this is super easy. So just ball it up, and then we are going to get some more flour and roll this out for the topping part. So now that we have this dough, I'm just going to go over this with like a pizza roller, and I'm just going to cut off some nice long strips. They're probably going to be about an inch in thickness. So I have this beautiful filling before we use those strips. I, of course, am going to be placing the filling inside this tart. Smooth out the ricotta filling, make sure that it is nice and evenly layered. And now that we have the ricotta in this pie, let's place those strips on top. We're doing this in a sort of checker square pattern on top. Very simple, literally no tricks here. We're just placing the strips on pressing the dough onto the side of the pan so that it holds its form. And we're sort of making like a, almost like a square or diamond pattern with this pie crust. And it actually looks like a little Easter basket if you can imagine. <laughs> now if you have any leftover dough, be sure to save it. I might even make a little mini mini pie because I also have a tiny bit of leftover filling as well. Now is the Easter part. You can of course just bake it like this with a light egg wash over, but I am going to do an egg wash and then the mini eggs. So I just have an egg whipped up here and I'm just going to be brushing the pie crust with this. This will give it some nice color when it goes into the oven. And now I have these pretty little mini eggs ready to go. So in each of the little triangles that you can see the ricotta, I'm just going to put a little mini egg inside. This will add some color and just a little festive twist on this already Easter tart here. 
So this is adorable. Now I'm going to be placing this into the oven at 350 for exactly one hour. What I usually do is I put this inside of a pan already just in case we get some spillage from the ricotta. Usually it doesn't spill over but it will puff up a little bit. So one hour at 350 and then I will see you guys back here again to let this cool off and then to eat it. Okay, I'm back. It's been about an hour since this has baked and then after it baked I took it out of the oven and I let it sit at room temperature for about 20 to 30 minutes and then I placed it in the fridge for another hour. Now usually I like to keep this in the fridge for about two to three hours before I cut into this or even overnight, but I'm kind of on a time crunch here so I'm gonna have to cut into this while it's still warm. Ideally I like to eat this cold or even room temperature just after you take it out of the fridge you can let it sit for like half an hour to even an hour at room temperature and that's a great texture but like I said I'm on a bit of a time crunch so I have to cut this up and eat this right away and I'm actually super excited to do so. So I have a pretty little plate here and I took this out of that spring form pan and it literally slid out so easily. I still have the bottom of the pan on here because like I said it's just a bit too warm to take it out right now but that's okay. So I'm gonna cut myself a little piece here. Oh, oh wow, look at that. <laughs> this looks so delicious. I can't wait to dig in guys, oh my gosh. And I even managed to make a little mini pie with the leftover crust and the filling. <laughs> and that's already gone. My mom came over and literally ate it all. So it just goes to show you how good this crostata is. You guys have to give this recipe a try. And I'm going to cut into this. Oh my gosh. You can see those little pieces of chocolate throughout. And the ricotta. Oh, it looks delicious. So let me give this a bite, guys. Mm. Wow, <laughs> it's so good. What can I say? The crust is delicious and tender and soft, yet there is a nice crunch to it. The ricotta is so creamy, and I honestly think it's just the right amount of sweetness because it is not too sweet. It's perfect. That chocolate in there just, it takes it to another level, guys. And even those chunks of mini eggs, oh, it's just heaven. <laughs> I just absolutely love this, guys. You guys have to give this a try. I can best describe this as literally eating a cannoli pie. So if you guys love cannoli, this is basically it, but in pie form, and it's so good and perfect for Easter. How cute is that? It almost looks like a little weaved Easter basket with those little mini eggs dropped on top. I'm so happy to share my recipe with you guys because I absolutely love it, and my family loves it as well, so I hope you guys will love it too. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more recipes like this one. So I'm literally gonna finish this off camera. I'm probably gonna make myself a nice coffee and unwind a bit before I have to run out the door. But I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Happy baking, happy Easter, and buona Pasqua! Mmm, <laughs> so good. Wow. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> you will be interested. Because you will be eating. Well, it's obvious. What are you gonna do? Is dance on it? <laughs> <laughs> Draw his hands. Okay. And this is very typical of Easter in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, look. See, I have lots more crust than that. We gotta make a mini pie. We can make a mini pie because I absolutely loves it. Because I. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <that. laughs>